Well, in today's video, I'm gonna get into some details about where to live around Langley Air Force Base, the best places to live that are close, and if you wanna get some better neighborhoods or some different types of neighborhoods, where to go outside of Langley a bit further out. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area that is from Virginia Beach all the way up through Williamsburg and I do videos every week about living and moving to this area. So today, I wanna to talk about Langley Air Force Base. I have a lot of people asking me about where the best places are to live in, around, in and around the uh, base. If you talk to a lot of people that live in Hampton or live in Newport News or the areas near Langley, you'll get a lot of different opinions and so it's hard to tell if you've never been here before what to do, where to go. So I'm going to get into some details about general areas of where to target in Hampton, Newport News, the areas near Langley, but also if you want to pivot away from these areas, some other good spots to go to because there are some, some de distinct drawbacks to living close to Langley that I will, I will get into. We're going to get into the map all through Hampton Roads to find the best spots that, you know, if you're looking for different types of environments or fields, you can have different options based on what you're looking for around Langley. So let's get into it. I'm going to show you the map. So these zoom out, this is Hampton itself. And Langley is in the north central section of the city, okay? So this whole general area is considered the peninsula of Hampton Roads. <clears throat> it includes Hampton, Newport News, York County, and Williamsburg, Jamestown, a lot of smaller towns, Grafton, for example, Seaford. And then if you go, as you go down south, this is called the, the south side of Hampton Roads, and it's connected by two uh, tunnels, the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel to the right, or the east, and the Monitor Merrimack Bridge Tunnel to the west, and also the James River Bridge as well. We'll talk about a couple Couple of these places for sure. So when you're starting to look in Langley, one of the first things you look at is, you know, the, the biggest city is Virginia Beach and also Norfolk, a couple of the biggest cities around here. And so when you're, when you're looking, for, especially if you have fa a family with kids, one of the first thoughts is, okay, I want to find a good school district, a good a place to raise my family. And there are a lot of places that fit that bill, but uh, some of the most targeted spots are, for example, Virginia Beach down in the south here, as well as Norfolk, or I'm sorry, as well as Chesapeake, school district related. And the reason why this matters is because that distance from Virginia Beach to Chesapeake is so far to Langley. It's like an hour plus oftentimes. And so it might not seem that way on the map. If you do like if you do a Google search or a map distance, it might only show you like it's like 45 minutes, 52 minutes, 39 minutes. But in reality, you can never plan for the distance between down the south side to the to the peninsula to go that well because of this tunnel. That the monitor of the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel is the main deciding factor to me between whether it's good to live on the south side or the peninsula because crossing this tunnel on a regular basis is incredibly frustrating and annoying and I personally don't often suggest it. So that means that instead of going into the Virginia Beach Chesapeake side, if you don't want to deal with that tunnel, it means staying on the peninsula, right? Then, so then it's a question of, okay, what's close to Langley that may, might meet my needs, right? So if it's, for example, a school district, if it's size of house, if it's type of neighborhood, if it's style of house or, or age of house, what's, what makes the most sense? Well, so for me, if I'm going to look at this from a family perspective or from a, 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 a family with kids or someone stationed here that is really locating more than just themselves, I'm looking at certain neighborhoods and certain general areas that might fit more uh, criteria in the style of house and, and setting that, that might make the most sense. So if I'm starting at Langley, you know, people want to live as close to Langley sometimes as possible, and so 5, 10, 15 minutes, that's kind of the ideal if someone wants to be close by. Well, in terms of the distance, you know, you're going to be in and around the north in the north central section and northeastern section of Hampton if you want, want to be that close. Well, what you'll find is there's a decent amount of commercial areas in the north side section, but also in the, the central section, you'll start seeing more houses, like right, right near this Coliseum area. This is called, uh, well, this is, there was an area called Coliseum Mall, just right up here, right next to the uh, 264, and this is West Mercury Boulevard, 258. There were some, some shopping areas, and it's kind of like a central area here. It is now over right in this middle part of, of, uh, of Hampton. And there are some houses in and around here that might be appealing, that are in that two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars price range. And a good example of a neighborhood close to Coliseum is an area called Riverdale, which has like a lot of three bedroom, four bedroom houses close to Coliseum, and it's very central. Now that's handy, but the thing I want to talk most about is when we shift over east, northeast into the northeastern corner of Hampton. 
So I, I want to draw a line kind of be, right, right north of uh, Route 258, which is at West Mercury Boulevard Road. And then north, this whole section, this northeastern peninsula of, of Hampton is totally different than the central, west, south, north, all the rest of the areas of Hampton. This whole section here, it's like its own little thing going on over here. So I say it's a little thing, it's a significant part of Hampton. But as the further north you go, the quieter it gets. So when you're looking at Hampton, going back to the general si uh, uh, map here, most of this area of Hampton has more of a, a little bit of an older kind of feel to it. There's not a whole lot of fanciness going on like in the south section here near Shell Road, over to the west, over near um, Aberdeen, uh, Briarfield. There's a lot of functional housing, just not a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of pizzazz, if you will. Now, if you go over to the um, north section, northeast, I'm sorry, western section, you'll, get, you'll start seeing some more newer construction, but a lot of this area is in the 50s, 60s, 70s, some 80s, like in the central section of Hampton. As you go into the downtown section over near near uh, Pasture Point and right in, right near downtown, you'll find some that are also pretty old as well. But I want to go back to this northeastern section, and the reason I'm bringing all this up is because all this feels kind of blah to me compared to northeastern Hampton. This will have a mixture of country, suburban uh, elements to it. There are some areas that are near near the beach, near an area called Buckrow Beach, uh, which I'd say of all the places on the north on the peninsula of uh, Hampton Roads, this is the most active and the largest beach in the area. Now, also you've got some, I have some other parks nearby, Grandview, the whole northeastern corner there is called Grandview, there's, there's a nice secluded beach up there as well. But in general, this whole area, I'd say if it were me, and I'm going to be close to Langley, I would look at this area quite a bit, near Willow Oaks, near, um, you got River Point. Um, this park right here, Gosnold's Hope Park, love this park, a big park, it has a, a, a public uh, boat ramp uh, nearby too. Ho Holiday Park is another one, and Howe Farms, um, Willow Oaks. Uh, is over here. Well, there's Willow Oaks right there. <laughs> um, a lot of these neighborhoods in here are sneaky cool. Around 250, 350, mostly between three and four hundred thousand dollars. And if you go up to the north side, you'll start seeing 450, 500 and up. But a lot of Hampton really stays under four to five hundred thousand dollars, and most of Hampton really is under four hundred thousand dollars. And I say some of these neighborhoods are, are awesome for the prices, three to three fifty to four hundred. Uh, and you'll find a lot of like functional four, two and a half uh, bedroom, twenty five hundred square feet, twenty two hundred square feet houses in this in this area uh, and close to high, to high school and that's one of the drawbacks to being in Hampton is the high schools aren't lower or lower ranked and so you might find that 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 might be uh, something that might uh, push you towards a different city but if you want to stay in Hampton I would definitely check this entire area out including Buckrow Beach salt ponds if you want to be close to the beach but if you go off of Buckrow I'm speaking a lot throwing a lot of stuff at you here off of Buck Row, you'll start seeing some some areas that are going to be a little bit more run down. So it changes a lot once you get to the beach. But <laughs> I digress. If you stay in this Willow Oaks area, you're going to be real close. You'll, I think you'll love the neighborhoods, and you're pretty accessible to also Coliseum, where there's a Target, lots of great shopping over in Coliseum area, and also Coliseum. Um, the Hampton Coliseum, the large performing arts center is about 15 minutes away. So the drawback to this area in a lot of the northeastern section of Hampton is going to be flooding issues. And this, it really, and I'd say this in a lot of different cities here, flooding can be a problem. It just depends on what your definition of flooding is and how badly you're concerned about it. So for example, flooding in Norfolk is probably to me the worst in terms of a lot of street flooding. Sometimes it gets to a point in diff different parts of the city where it can rise you know, into a like into a kind of a difficult spot, like where the water gets high enough into your yard and really starts becoming a problem, and maybe flooding into some houses if all the conditions meet. And that large scale flooding can happen. Um, that can also happen in Hampton and other parts of the peninsula, and especially where there's a tidal. Tidal flooding is a big biggest the biggest deal in Hampton. Uh, you're, again, you're close to look at the look at the uh, the water. You're close to the ocean on one side, and you're also close to the Back River over on this side as well, which is near, near, right near Langley and the creeks and canals and you got the Hampton River down here. All this area, the water can rise and it becomes a problem and anywhere up in this section you'll see that a lot of the area requires flood insurance. So if you do not want flood insurance, this might not be the place for you. But if you don't mind it, I would first a check to see what see what the cost of the of flood insurance would be uh, to for the house that you might want. I definitely would ask neighbors. Asking neighbors is very important because 
it's really hard to tell what has happened and what could happen in the future for flooding. So talking to people that have been here for a long time to find out really what's happened in the last 10, 20, 30 years sometimes so you know what the odds are of anything being a problem and comparing it to what you're thinking in your head as to what flooding could look like here. That's part of the reason why the, the houses are priced cheaper here. A house that's 325 or 350, let's just say it's, it's priced at 300 and the flood insurance is $1,600 a year. That's a hundred, uh, about $130 uh, per month in flood insurance, which is about 20-ish thousand dollars of mortgage, so to speak, in this the current interest rate pr price range. So for a 300 house with that flood insurance, that all of a sudden that becomes a 320, $320,000 house if you bought a house that didn't have flood insurance and you are gonna pay the same amount. So that, that can matter, and that's partly why that prices are a little bit lower uh, in general in areas that have need flood insurance. But all, overall, I would definitely target this whole northeastern section of Hampton. Uh, a lot of functional housing in the rest of Hampton, but in general, that to be if you wanna be close, I would check over there if you can. And there are some houses over there that are under 250 and even around two or less sometimes. So kind of a good price point for a lot of people over there. Now, I'm gonna shift the attention over to Newport News, because that's the, usually the next pivot people uh, look at when they're looking at uh, uh, Langley and a couple of others, but let's start with Newport News. Newport News is a long, narrow city, and you see you see the size of this thing. It is, it's like long and narrow. See that? And it borders York County to the to the uh, east, and then eventually up towards Williamsburg uh, to the north, right? Now, Newport News has this, has a similar reputation with Hampton as far as school districts are concerned. So this, these Newport News and Hampton are often grouped together when people are trying to compare and make decisions about moving. So I personally like Hampton for certain reasons, but I like Newport News for a lot of reasons that Hampton doesn't have. One of which is some of the areas on the western side of, of Newport News, and if you've watched my Newport News videos before, you'll know what I'm talking about. From basically from Warwick Boulevard uh, west, I love all of these areas. Jefferson as well. Like you start at Jefferson, going up, up and down through the middle of Newport News, going west. I love all this area. All right, near Christopher Newport, if you don't go about five miles north and a couple miles uh, east, the whole section has tons of neighborhoods that I love. For example, for example, Warwick on the James is, is uh, towards the western side near the water. Hyden was a great one. Riverside, uh, Hilton down here. Uh, this is a very cool little trendy little neat area that I think could ha has some growth potential. Uh, just some revitalization going on down there. And there's kind of a nice little quaint town in Newport News. Uh, lots of older houses back here, 60s, 70s, and 80s, all through this section here. But I love this, and it's totally different than what people might say what they are experiencing with other parts of Newport News. Because if you go down to the, the southern part of Newport News, this is all downtown, uh, kind of run down, older houses near downtown areas. A lot of older, like it's it's a total different vibe down here. And this is probably where people get the expectation of, of what they think Newport News looks like a lot of times. So I like the western part of Newport News. I think you'll find some great ones like Denby Plantation is up in this section. Uh, if you go on Blunt Point Road, the, the, the parks near here are great. Mariner's Museum near the, near the park over here. You have access to water. You can use running trails, the Nolan Trail, uh, right along the water there. Uh, you've got some other neighborhoods, I guess you could say Hydenwood, near Christopher Newport University. This whole area is loaded with areas like three, four bedroom houses, five bedrooms. You, you got uh, uh, some smaller ones, functional housing towards that central section of Newport News near the Living Museum. Over near the Riverview Farm Park, um, you're gonna have a lot of kind of family stuff going on. And it, you're also close to city center, which is over in the center of Newport News. So if you're gonna be in Newport News, I love this whole Western section uh, for, you've got four bedroom houses and they the three, three fifty, four hundred thousand dollar price range. Now, if you go to the far east, uh, far west side near the water, that's where things get to like five, six, seven hundred thousand on the water. You can get oh, well over a million dollars because these are some awesome like views of the James River. Um, even if you're off the water. Some of these neighborhoods are so, so rich. They're great neighborhoods, real secluded, and it doesn't feel like you're in even in anything close to a city. I mean, it's, it's real relaxed. So I love this whole Western section of Newport News. And this is about 20, anywhere from, from 15 to 25 minutes away from Langley, depending on where you are in that area. And then you're close to also Patrick Henry, Henry Mall, and you're close to the airport too. It's a smaller airport in the Newport News airport, but it's pretty close. Now, we've had these two, two cities. Both of these are going to be lower ranked school districts. So if you're like, all right, these are great, Sam, but I need school districts. This is very, very important to me. And I talk to a lot of people that have this dilemma. 
Okay, there are some, uh, some other options, and some of them might take a little bit further drive, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Number one is TAB, or York County, the south part of York County. TAB, if you looked up TAB, TAB High School, uh, well, York County, the York County school districts are some of the, most, the highest ranked anywhere in the state. TAB High School is either A+, Grafton, York. Um, you're gonna find some some of the more most widespread high ranked school districts in York County. And then you notice there's the North York County up near Williamsburg and then the South York County. Right now I'm talking about South York County. The neighborhood I like the best in South York County is an area called Running Man uh, in Tab. So you can see right there, Running Man Trail right through here. This area is close to Tab High School and uh, I mean you're, gonna, you're like 10 minutes away maybe from the base. Uh, 12 minutes maybe, um, and I'd say it's my favorite, like you got 450, 500 and up. Now, TAB is interesting because it's, again, higher ranked school districts, and you're also close to the 64 uh, interchange, Interstate 64, so you can get all the way down into the south side if you want to. You're also super close to Langley. So if you want proximity to Langley, like 10, 15 minutes, you can get into the tab section or Grafton, just north of there, about 20 minutes or so. Uh, and you can get, for the same distance, uh, the neighborhood you might like, the school district you might like. However, what you'll find is the prices are higher. So in general, the South uh, South York County section, you're gonna start like in the, around the three, 350 price range. Most of them will be in that price range. You'll find some cheaper, but again, for the most part. And then you can easily get into 375, 400, 425, 500, you know, it starts going up from there. But in general, if you can spring for it, if you, you want to be close, I think you'll have most of your options for like school district, neighborhood, all that in the, uh, the tab in South York County section near Grafton. Now you've noticed I haven't mentioned Pocosin at all, and the, there's an answer to that as, as to why. Pocosin, it's first of all, it's, it's a lot of country, which is, that's great, that's fine. But this is the thing about Pocosin. It is loaded with areas that require flood insurance. And it's not that it's, it's not that it's super bad all the time, but it's, to me it's enough to where I'd be concerned about you know, where to go and pick in Pocosin. So if you're gonna be in Pocosin, you might love the country, and this is something that does have, in Pocosin it has more than other places, is that country feel. But it also carries most of the area requires flood insurance. So most of it's saying anywhere from like the where it says Blue Crab Purple Pig Bistro into to the east. Most of that area requires it, even just a little bit further west from there too. It's just kind of its own peninsula over there. Lots of more marshy areas, um, low lying areas. I just would be a little bit careful there from from the, the flooding perspective. Otherwise, check it out. You know. And you'll see online, you'll see the houses look great. It just it doesn't always factor in the flood insurance. So then that being said, if you're not so sure if you want the tab or York County area, South York County area, um, you can also consider Seaford, also in a flood insurance scenario over here on the Eastern section of here, but it's also in the same York County area um, and going up even to Yorktown as well. Uh, so we've covered all this section. In general, if you're looking for school districts, I would check out South York County first if you wanna be close to Langley. Otherwise, if you're okay private school or you're okay with the public school sections in Hampton, Newport News, definitely check out the western section of Newport News and also the northeastern section of Hampton. Now we get into a bigger decision point that people often run into when they're, when they're looking for areas outside of the Newport News Hampton general area. It's gonna be like, for example, Williamsburg, North York County, this whole area near Jamestown, and then you've got areas of Carrollton and Smithfield on this section, or south, uh, north of Suffolk, northwest Portsmouth, in, in western Chesapeake. These, all these areas are, they're somewhat similar in drive distance, and they have some school district elements that are very similar and different types of vibes in neighborhoods. And so if you don't like what you find in the peninsula area, in the South Peninsula area, these are the pivots. So first of all, we're gonna mention Williamsburg. I love Williamsburg. Colonial Williamsburg is one of my favorites. I love the whole vibe up here. The history is awesome. Lots of hills compared to the rest of the area. You got country in front some parts, but also uh, you've got uh, real secluded neighborhoods, amazing old trees, like just the whole, all the neighborhoods feel very established established, a lot of them in Williamsburg, and so you'll have lots of options in this area, four or five bedroom houses. You'll have some planned communities like Ford's Colony, Governor's uh, Land, uh, Kings Mill. There's three big ones over and around the exterior uh, of the, the outer uh, loop of Williamsburg around 199. 
North York County is, is part of uh, parts of Williamsburg too. So you have a mixture of decent to above average schools. You've got the amazing vibes, neighborhoods, the house styles are unique over here. And you're also pretty equidistant to lots of other cities. So for example, you can go down to the Virginia Beach in an hour, hour and 10 minutes. You can also go to Richmond in about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. So you're pretty, pretty close to larger cities. You're banked, you're bookended between York, the York River and the James River. But at the same time, there's not a whole lot of nightlife. It's not super exciting after like 7.30. <laughs> so that's another drawback I would say. But if you don't like Williamsburg, which, which I do, but again, maybe the drive, maybe it's being on 64 because of the traffic on 64, which can be a little bit of a problem. Here are two pivots that I don't think people talk about as enough because I think there's a mental block or something about the tunnel and the bridge, which is Route 17, the James River Bridge, crossing over the James River, going over to Carrollton. Carrollton has some, some sneaky good areas, new construction, area called Eagle Harbor, which is over here right near the James River, River Bridge, which if you take that area, like right near that food line, go up across the bridge, you can be Langley in like less than 20 minutes or around 20 minutes. It's not bad, it's, it's, it's actually shorter than going to parts of Newport News or other, other parts of the uh, the peninsula. So it's a, it's a spot like if you want something in the fours, fives, you can get condos in the twos often as well, but like some smaller single families like in the threes, but mainly 400 and up, you'll get some, some larger houses over here and the newer houses and the newer houses in the, in the neighborhoods are where people might not like the house areas in Newport News and Hampton because of the lack of the neighborhood vibe and like that planned area. But Carrollton might have a few that might work for you if you like that kind of vibe, that newer subdivision vibe. Um, then if you go in the Smithfield, that's kind of more traditional country, but it's close. And if you want the country feel, but you don't like the Bacosan element, go to Smithfield. It's about 30 minutes or so from Langley-ish. And another benefit to, to the, the, uh, the uh, James River Bridge is that it doesn't have as much traffic as, for example, the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. So that's another benefit. Now, going down south into the, well, south into the north section of Suffolk, the northeastern section of Suffolk over here in an area called Harborview and South, this whole section here connects to Carrollton on Route 17 over to the connection of 664 and Route 17. This whole area here, I mean, this is, this is pretty cool because it's close to Newport News and Hampton. I'd say you're about you have to go through a tunnel, which can be annoying, but it's not as bad as the one the one in Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. 25 minutes or so, if, if that, to Langley. Could be less than that. But over in 664, um, uh, uh, Western Branch, West Chesapeake, these areas have in-demand school districts. You're also closer to Virginia Beach. So if you want to be closer to Virginia Beach, this is about a 40, 45 minute drive to the, like, to the mid Eastern section of Virginia Beach, but you know you can get to Norfolk literally about 20 minutes or less from the 664 corridor right here. I mean, literally take 164 over. A, there's a toll, but you can get it through the tunnel, this Midtown Tunnel, and get into Ghent and Norfolk where the nightlife is. So if you want to be close to nightlife, close to like, literally everything, there's a cross. It takes you all over the place. I would check out this area of Suffolk, northeastern Suffolk, and also northwestern Portsmouth, which people don't like Portsmouth a lot of times. I am fine with it personally. I like it, but there's a reputation about Portsmouth that you know crime can be a problem. The areas can feel run down, but the taxes also are pretty high, like 30 percent higher than other parts of of uh, the area. If I was going to pivot away from anywhere in the peninsula or in away from Carrollton. Definitely check this area out because the prices are going to be anywhere from like the 300,000 price range. Could be a little bit less than that, upwards of four, five, and up. It feels similar to North uh, Eastern Suffolk in a lot of places. So the Northwestern Portsmouth area, that whole corridor, though, uh, kind of blends together. Um, but you got plenty of shopping. You've got Kroger. Like, that's one of my favorite Kroger's. Uh, it's a Kroger Marketplace. It's, it's awesome. If you've not been to Kroger Marketplace, worth it. Um, Walmart's close by. Lots of shopping in the Harborview area. But you got Ben's. Creek uh, Park, this whole neighborhood up here, there's a lot of new construction going from the, uh, the, sh the Bridge Road south and 664 going west. This whole area, this is kind of like the boom in the uh, mid 2000s and newer. You get a lot of newer neighborhoods over here, anywhere from like the threes, fours, and $500,000 price ranges. You can go, I mean, so some of these though near the water, six, seven, 800,000, a million plus, especially near the water, near some golf courses near Bennett's Creek, up near the corner of Bridge Road. Um, you have some awesome views up here on the, of the, uh, the river, the Nansman River. So over you, if you want new construction or newer construction, you'll have a lot more options in the uh, Suffolk, northeastern Suffolk uh, area 
and it's gonna be close to Bridge Road, gonna take you up towards the James River Bridge or towards 664, and it'll be probably 30 minutes drive, give or take, to the, the Langley Air Force Base. One thing I will say that kind of blankets the entire area is that you can kind of take a lot of the nightlife options and kind of throw it out the window. There's not a whole lot going on in Hampton Newport News after like 9, 10 o'clock at night. Now, you'll have some people that will say, that's not true, there are some things going on. Yeah, that's, that's true, but not in general. Like, Norfolk is the place for nightlife, as well as parts of Virginia Beach near the ocean front. But in general, not a whole lot happening in Newport News Hampton. You're gonna find that if you want that kind of thing, you might wanna trend south, like even in Suffolk, so you can be close to Langley, but also maybe closer to Norfolk or Virginia Beach. So, the general idea here is that you've got a lot of options if you wanna stay under 45 minutes or less, but, but even really 30, 35 minutes or less will get you a lot of places in and around the Langley Air Force Base, and I would say don't let the tunnels, the, completely uh, take out some parts of the area. You'll, you'll increase uh, your options vastly if you include areas in Carrollton across the bridge here or the Hampton Road, or the Monty Merrimack Bridge Tunnel down to the south. The big thing you have to think about when you're coming to Langley is, do you wanna live close to Langley, 10, 15 minutes or less? If that's the case, it will, dis it will significantly influence the type of neighborhood you'll get, the age of the house you'll often get but you might be paying less for a house, but will you get what you want? And that's the question. If you wanna be close and you also want the high ranked school district, definitely check out TAB, definitely check out York County. And then if not, go up towards Williamsburg, that's your next option, as well as Carrollton. But I wanna get into some more details about each area here, and I've done a lot of videos that do go into more detail. So if you have any questions about living here or want to relocate to specific parts of the area, let me know, because I love getting into the nooks and crannies of these neighborhoods, and it's hard to do that in a 25, 30 minute video. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I have my contact information in the description, or you can reach out to me anytime, and I'll do whatever I can to help you, and I will see you on the next video.